Okay, let's go over the paragraph on the bottom. You are only required to inspect the items on the CDL vehicle inspection list. This list. You may use this checklist for your test and check off items as you have completed them. No additional markings or writing, so you can't draw on this. You can just make the check marks. That's it. Make sure you point to and or touch and fully explain what you are inspecting. That's probably the most important part. All right, let's get started. You got in the truck with three points of contact. You're going to go ahead and close your door. <clears throat> the examiner will get in the truck. You're going to be in the truck first for a couple minutes. They're going to go inside, check your paperwork. Once they get back, you would have already been in the truck for a couple minutes. So, you know, just grab your checklist, go over everything, kind of collect yourself and just, you know, get in the mindset of taking the test. So once the examiner walks in, they're going to close the door. Okay, you know, good morning, whatever. They're going to give you their paperwork back. Um, at this point, you're going to put the chocks outside. So if you do have a checklist, just put it down to the side. You could just stick it in the middle right there. We're going to put the chocks outside. So I have to take my chocks. I'm going to place them by my feet. Exit the truck with three points of contact. Get out backwards. Okay, I'm going to put the chocks down on the front tire so one in front one in the back of the tire okay and we're gonna get back in the truck with three points of contact okay close the door and put your seatbelt on okay we are now ready to do a safe start First thing I'm going to do, take the key, cycle the gauges. I'm going to turn it one click to the right. I'm going to check my air pressure. Okay, this truck has been off all night, so it hasn't been turned on yet. I have zero PSI of air pressure. Uh, when it's at the DMV, it's going to get driven up there, so you may have a full tank of air. If it's over 90 PSI, let's say it's at 100, you would have to fan the brakes down until this number goes down to below 90. Okay, right now it's at zero, so that is good. I'm also gonna check my spring brakes. Make sure the valves are out, which means the brakes are applied. Okay, and just one little last thing. Make sure it's a neutral, which it should be. And we're gonna start the truck. At this point, when I start the truck, I'm going to check the oil pressure as soon as it, after it ignites, and I'll mention the ABS light. Okay, ABS light blinked on and off. That's what's blinking. My oil pressure rose up within three to five seconds. If it did not, I would shut the truck off. During this time, I am waiting for my air pressure to build up between 120 and 140. My governor cutoff valve should cut out. Okay, during this time, you're gonna sit, you're gonna wait and do nothing. If the examiner asks you to help it along, you're gonna give it a little bit of acceleration, a little bit of RPMs, and you're just gonna hold it steady. That'll help build the air pressure up. Only do it if they ask. Okay, so during this time, you're just waiting. You know, don't just sit here and kind of just daydream. You're gonna go back to your list. Right now, we're doing the air and, oh, no hydraulic brakes on our truck, so we're doing the air brake check right now, okay? I'm gonna do the entire in cab. It may not be in this exact order, but make sure you're checking things off as you're getting past them. Okay, so right now we're doing the air brake check. Okay, we're still waiting. Our air pressure is at about 50. And remember, this may take a little longer than usual because we started at zero on the test. It just has to be below 90. So I'm gonna go ahead and help it along a little bit so we can speed this up. Governor cutoff valve go off. Now, also, guys, if you're worried about the trucks, you know, you may not take this truck. We have two automatic trucks. You may not see a truck like this when you get a job and you're out on the road. 
it doesn't matter. They all have the same brakes. They look the same. They're yellow and red. The gauges are in the same spot. Maybe not exactly, but the gauges are in front of you. They all say the same thing. Don't get too confused. Some of them have buttons. Some of them may have a stick. So again, neutrals, neutral, drive, reverse. It's all the same. So don't get too caught up on obsessing over one truck just to pass the test. This is all general knowledge for all trucks on how to do pre-trip. All right, so the governor should be going off soon. Let's sit and wait. my governor cutoff valve that tells me that my air system is fully charged and there are no leaks at this time I will turn the truck off turn the electricity only back on so one click to the right let the gauges sweep good okay and last I'm going to push both valves in okay so in and in, make sure they're both in. Okay, you hear the air hissing? That's the air releasing the brakes. So give it a couple seconds because it does take time for the air to travel all the way to the back of the trailer. Okay, once that hissing noise has stopped or at least slowed down, that's good enough. We are now set up to do the applied brake test. So I'm going to put my foot on the service brake with about medium pressure. Okay, when you put your foot down, you will see this gauge move, all right? Just know that the examiner can see that. So make sure you push it down about medium pressure. You're gonna grab your stopwatch. There may be one here. If not, use your cell phone. I'm gonna tell the examiner I'm gonna hold my foot down for a minute. I'm gonna watch my gauges, make sure I do not lose any more than four PSI within one minute. You're gonna hold it for a minute and 10 seconds. That will give the examiner a little bit of cushion because they will have their own watch. Okay, release the brake. You're gonna stop the stopwatch. Okay, I did not lose any more than four PSI within a minute. That tells me there are no leaks in the system. I will go ahead and fan the brakes down to below 60 PSI and my low air warning light and buzzer should come on. Okay, that is my low air warning lights and buzzer. They are on, means they work properly. I will continue to pump it down below 40 PSI and my valves should pop out. I'm going to sit here and watch the valves, not my gauges, okay? Because it's 40 and below, so it could go off at any time. You see, one popped out. Keep going until they're both out. Good. Now you see, maybe 20 PSI, so it's never the same number, and sometimes they don't pop out at the same time. Okay, my spring brakes have popped out, telling me they're working properly. At this time, I will go ahead, turn the truck off. Okay, take the key with you. I forgot that on the first time, so don't forget that on the first time around. I did forget that, so if you caught me, Good for you. Take the key with you. Put it in your pocket during this part. You have to take the key with you. I forgot on the first one. Depending on your examiner, they may let it slide. Some of them may not let it slide. They could fail you for that. Seems ridiculous, but <sighs> they're rules. So make sure you take the key with you. Put it in your pocket. Egg Exit the truck, three points of contact, get the chocks, put them back inside where they belong, enter the truck with three points of contact, take the key back out of your pocket, put it back in the ignition, don't do anything yet because you have to put your seatbelt on and close the door. Okay, take the key with you. Don't forget it like I did on the first time around. Okay, put your seatbelt back on. You're going to sweep the gauges again. We're just going to do another safe start. Okay. Very good. Air pressure is below 90 already. Truck is in neutral and my spring uh, my spring brakes are pulled out, which means they're activated. 
start the truck. And just like the first time around, ABS light is blinking on and off, telling me it's working properly. My oil pressure rose within three to five seconds. If it did not, I would shut the truck off. Okay, we just did the brake check. Parking and trailer brake check. That's the tug test. We're going to do that later. So we're going to start doing the in-cabin inspection, which is right here. The lighting indicators and down. So let's start with that. Let's start with lighting indicators. Okay, my lighting indicators. Left turn signal indicator working properly. Right turn signal indicator is working properly. My four-way flasher indicator is working properly. Go ahead, turn the headlights on so you can check your high beam indicator is working properly. Yeah, you can leave the lights on. Okay, so you can go ahead and check off lighting indicators. Let's do emergency equipment next. My seatbelt, secured to the cab. It's not ripped, frayed, or torn. It unlatches and it catches properly. My three reflective triangles are secured in their red box. They are present. They are clean, not cracked, or broken. Okay, and my fire extinguisher. It is 10 pound ABC fire extinguisher, fully charged. It is up to date, secured with a pin. And my glove box. I should have a spare fuse for every electrical component in the truck, unless it's equipped with a circuit breaker. And I should have spare fuses somewhere on the truck. Okay, emergency equipment, done. Windshield and traffic monitoring devices, AKA mirrors. My windshield, clean, not cracked or broken. No cracks larger than one inch, no illegal stickers. My windshield seal, it's in good condition, not dry rotted, no visible leaks. My mirrors are adjusted to my driving. They are clean, not cracked or broken, no cracks, no illegal stickers. Okay. Windshield and traffic monitoring devices, done. You can check that off. Wipers and washers, let's go ahead and do that. My wiper arm is straight, not bent or broken. Wiper blade, it's in good condition, making full contact and it's not ripped or frayed. My washer fluid, I have to fill it up, it's empty, but if it was working, I would say that it is cleaning my windshield. Okay, wipers and washers, done. Heater and defroster. Go ahead and put it on defrost setting. Turn the fan all the way up. You're gonna feel air coming through. That means there are no obstructions in my vents and I would use the defrost to clean fog or frost off of my windshield. Go ahead and put it on the upper and lower setting. Okay, I feel air coming through telling me there are no obstructions in my vents. Okay. Heater and defroster done. Horns. My city horn works. Highway horn works. Sometimes on the trucks there may be a button over here, but typically they're up there. Okay, my horns work. So during this time, if you move through it quickly like that, I'm just going to go ahead and wait for the governor cutoff valve. You know, the headlights are on. You could mention, too, that all the gauges are illuminated. You don't have to mention the gauges anymore uh, in detail, but you can say that they are all illuminated and there are no warning lights. That's a general overview for the gauges. Other than that, we covered all the ink cap. Now we're just waiting for the governor cutoff valve to go off. Again, do not help it along unless the examiner asks you. I'm just going to do it to speed up the video. Okay, that was my governor cutoff valve. Tells me that my tanks are full and the system is fully charged. If that goes off while you are doing the in cab at any point, you have to stop, mention it, and then continue where you were. Okay, so that is all complete. Now we're going to take a step back because remember, we skipped parking and trailer brake and service brake. So we're going to check that. That is also called the tug test. So, first thing we're gonna do, push in the red valve. Wait till the hissing noise stops, because remember, it takes a little time for the air to travel back. Go ahead and put it in drive. You don't need your foot on the brake because the yellow brake is still active. Put it in drive, you're gonna feel the truck tug on the trail or on the brake. 
good put it back in neutral you're gonna feel the truck settle that means that my tractor brake is holding properly this is active this is off now go ahead and switch pull out the red push in the yellow put it back in drive okay I feel the tug put it back in neutral that tells me that my trailer brake is holding properly and my fifth wheel is secured. During this time, put your foot on the service brake. Push in the red valve so that way both valves are in. Foot on the service brake. Put it in drive. Move up five to 10 feet, both hands on the steering wheel. Okay, come to a full stop. Back to neutral. Secure your truck. Okay, my truck has come to a full stop. Service brake is working properly. It is not pulling to either side, which means it's wearing out evenly and the components are functioning properly. During this time, I will shut the truck off. Headlights on, I'll turn my flashers on, make sure the truck is secured. Take your seatbelt off, take the key with you and exit the truck with three points of contact. Okay, take the key with you, put it in your pocket take your checklist with you because we're going to head outside and we are going to finish off the rest of this this we don't do that's for bus okay i'm going to cut the video here we'll start a new one here we are on the outside let's continue our checklist we are going to go over front of vehicle lenses let's do lenses lenses would be my headlights so the lamp itself it's not clean not cracked or broken properly illuminated the light bulbs there is no proper color for the headlights, but say they're properly illuminated, functioning properly. Four-way flashers, clean, not cracked or broken, properly illuminated, proper color amber. Okay, lenses, I'm gonna go up top, see if there's any clearance lights, there are up there, properly illuminated, clean, not cracked or broken, proper color amber. Okay, my lenses are done. Let's go to fluid levels, fluid and air leaks, steering system. So at this point, we're going to stay in the front and we're gonna check inside but let's go fluid and air leaks so really quick just look underneath the truck I don't see any puddles I don't see anything dripping no hoses or wires hanging down okay it's important to check that let's open up the hood I already unclipped it two hands here one foot here one foot on the ground okay when you open it don't let it crash down ease it down start on the passenger side okay for this now lenses fluid levels let's just do a general overview of all of our fluid levels okay coolant is not leaking the windshield washer reservoir on this truck is actually over here but again it's good to know where it is sometimes they are here so i don't see any leaking underneath that i do not see any leaking coming from the coolant reservoir i don't see any coolant no oil, I don't see anything leaking on the ground. Okay, air leaks, you're gonna listen for, listen for any air leaks. You know you have brake lines on this side. Uh, you can hear any hissing noise you're gonna be listening for, so you're checking for air leaks. Okay, that is good. Steering system, that's on the other side. So let's go to the other side of the truck. Now again, the uh, if you could remember, now again, I, I'm, I don't know if they require this anymore. They used to, but you could mention that you would check the coolant. If it was low, you have to wait till it's cool to the touch before you fill it up. Okay, pretty general, but just remember, cool to the touch. Okay, so again, over here, let's check for fluid. I don't see any, no leaks on the floor. I don't see anything dripping. No power steering fluid leaking. No oil leaking over here. Okay, nothing on the ground. We're good any air leaks you do have the air compressor on this side you don't have to talk about it anymore but just mention i don't hear any hissing there's no air leaks again you have brake lines they could air leak so there's no leak no air leaks no fluid leaks okay so you can check that off we did the whole front of the truck now let's go to steering systems right there so steering systems start with the shaft okay no more than two inches of play straight not bent or broken secure the u-joints the u-joints are secured Hardware is present and is properly greased. My steering gearbox, properly mounted and secured to the frame. It's not leaking, it's not cracked or broken. All the hoses, again, we already checked that. No leaking from any of the hoses. They're all secured. 
my four piece steering linkage. The pieces down here, my pitman arm, drag link, steering knuckle, and then the tie rod is that straight bar all the way at the bottom. Okay, all four pieces are secured with castle nuts, castle nuts and cotter pins. Okay, power steering reservoir. Again, we checked it for the leaks. And again, these hoses back here, they go to the power steering pump. Again, we already talked about it in a way because we checked for any leaks. There's no power steering fluid leaking. If there was, it would probably be coming from the pump if it was back there. So just so you know for yourself. <clears throat> Checking for leaks, general, 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 no leaks. Okay, good. Steering systems is done. Now we can go to where it says steering axle. You got tires, rims, lug nuts, springs. So you could follow the order on this list. It kind of goes backwards from how we used to do it. We used to do the suspension, then the brakes, and then the tires. But let's just follow the list because you guys are going to be using this. So tires, specifically these because this is where you are. Outer wall, inner wall, no abrasion bubbles or cuts, bead in seated to the rim. The treads, no cuts, no damage, no less than four thirty seconds of an inch. I'll check it with a tread depth gauge in three different spots to make sure it's wearing evenly. These cannot be recapped and they cannot be regrooved. Steering tires must be matching same size tires. Okay, next is rims. My rims. Make sure they're round, no cracks, no illegal welding. We'll check the outer rim and the inner rim. Next is lug nuts. There's 10 lug nuts. This is an aluminum rim, so I'm looking for white powder. If it was a steel rim, you look for rust streaks. Okay, that's good. Springs and airbags and shocks. So the suspension system. So we're gonna take a step back a little bit. We're gonna come over here to the leaf spring hanger. The leaf spring hanger is that piece there. That's the mount for the leaf spring. So that's not cracked or broken, properly secured to the frame. The leaf spring itself, which is this piece, the long piece going across, it's not cracked or broken, no illegal welding, and it's secured to the mounts and it's secured to the axle using these two U-bolts. The U-bolts are not cracked or broken and they're secured at the bottom with the four nuts right there. And that's also securing the saddle with the bump stop. The saddle's not cracked or broken. Bump stop's in good condition. The shock absorber, it's not cracked or broken. I don't see any visible leaks. Properly mounted and secured to the top and bottom mounts. Okay. The leaf spring also, they're not shifting and they're not scissoring because they are stacked, you can see. So they do tend to shift. Okay, brake line. Hoses and leaks. Okay, I look for brake lines right here. My air hose, no abrasions, bubbles, or cuts, no audible leaks. ABS wire, no illegal tape, corrosion, or burns. My brake chamber, no audible leaks. The C clamp is properly secured. The push rod and the slack adjuster, they're secured with two pins and cotter pins. The way I would test it, you pull on this, there should be no more than one inch of free play. And I would check it by securing my wheels with the chocks and releasing my brakes. No more than one inch of play. Inside here, behind this plate, there's a, kind of hard to see, there's a brake drum and a brake shoe. This is the brake drum here, but the brake shoe's on the inside. The brake shoe and the brake drum can have no debris, grease, or oil between the two. The brake drum can't be cracked, no illegal welding. The brake shoe must be thicker than a quarter inch. So that covers brake lines, hoses, leaks, and brake contaminants. Okay, now we're gonna go down to side of vehicle. Okay, side of vehicle, lenses and reflectors. So there is a four-way flasher, but it is on the hood here. So I guess you could say that's for the side. Clean, not cracked or broken, properly illuminated, proper color, amber. If there's any reflective tape, which there is none, and there are no more lights on the side of the truck, we can go down. Traffic monitoring devices. Again, that's mirrors. The mirror bracket, properly mounted and secured. Hardware's present, it's tight, straight, not bent or broken. The mirrors, we talked about them inside. The battery, okay, the battery box is underneath the driver's steps. I would remove it, not on the test. I would check the batteries, see if they're leaking, they're not cracked. 
they're not damaged they're not bulging i'll check the connectors make sure they're not corroded i'll check the wires there's no illegal tape corrosion or burns fuel tank the fuel tank is on the other side of this truck so we're going to skip that for a second okay frame now frame that's this the frame of the tractor the frame is straight not cracked or broken no illegal welding no illegal holes it's in good condition okay combination vehicles only that is tractor trailer that's what we got here so we got air electric lines and connectors that is this my air lines and wire are wrapped in this plastic which means they can drag on the catwalk i'll check my air hoses no abrasions bubbles or cuts check my wire no illegal tape corrosion or burns i'll check the connectors the glad hands there's a rubber seal on the inside there check the rubber seal make sure it is not dry rotted not cracked no audible leaks i'll check the plug the receiver should have the seven pins they should be all present and straight the plug itself should have the seven holes clear and greased. Okay, that is that. Now let's go to fifth wheel skid plate, pintle hook. Don't worry about that. Skid plate is all you need to know. Kingpin and apron. So we're going to do the whole fifth wheel here. Okay, tongue coupler, locking, and safety devices. So these next three points is the whole fifth wheel that I'm going to go over right now. So after I go over this, you can check off those next three things. This is the apron up here. The apron is straight, not cracked or broken. No illegal welding. All the holes you see are from the manufacturer. The skid plate is the next piece down. This. The skid plate's not cracked or broken. No daylight between the skid plate and the apron. And it's properly greased. The skid plate and the platform are secured with a nut and a bolt. You can see them right here. The platform is not cracked or broken. It's in good condition. Properly secured to the frame. And you can see the hardware. Hardware is here and it's all tight. Okay, so apron, skid plate, platform, and then the frame of the truck. The lock jaw, release handle, which is this here. It is in the closed position. It's straight, not bent or broken. Now we gotta go underneath. And we have to hit the kingpin, which is inside there. It's hard to see, but it's inside that space. It's a little shiny cylinder. The kingpin secured to the apron of the trailer, not cracked or broken, properly greased. The lock jaw teeth are in front. You can see that they are closed. They're kind of down at the bottom here. They're properly greased and they're both, you can see both sides are closed. Okay, it's in front, it's in good condition, it's working properly. Okay, now we did that. Trailer only, which would be landing gear and clearance and reflective tape and then lenses and reflectors. So let's do some parts. Landing gear is right here. The handle is in the proper stowed position. The hardware is present, it's tight. Not cracked or broken. The landing gear shoe, it's properly suspended off of the ground for driving. The shoe itself is not cracked or broken. And the leg is properly greased. My DOT reflective tape is properly, uh, it's in good condition, proper color, white and red. And it's present all the way down the side skirt. My four-way flasher, again, proper color, amber, clean, not cracked or broken, properly illuminated. We're gonna go down. We're going to go to the rear of the trailer, do the lenses and reflectors. So four-way flashers, proper color red, clean, not cracked or broken, working properly. License plate matches the paperwork inside the king box and it's properly illuminated. Again, all the reflective tape is present. Marker lights up top, proper color red, clean, not cracked or broken, properly illuminated. Let's go to the other side of the truck. We got to do one major, major part, the fuel tank. Don't forget it. Again, DOT tape on this side is good. Four-way flasher is working, properly illuminated, proper color, amber. Fuel tank on this side because there is no fuel tank on the other side of the truck. The fuel tank, good condition, not cracked, not broken, nothing leaking. Secured with the metal straps and the rubber backing. That's this. And the fuel cap, I would check the rubber seal inside and make sure the chain is also present. And that is it. So you can check off all external lights and you can check off the fuel tank stuff. And that would complete your class A checklist on the automatic truck.